mantids. Ruthless killers, eating hummingbirds, lizards, and even their own mates, turning predators into prey, all with an emotionless glare. Okay, that may be a little dramatic, but either way, this is the order Mantidia. Welcome to the Insect Spotlight Project, a channel dedicated to shining a light on insects, spiders, and any other creepy crawlies that get left out of the ecologic spotlight. So today, we're talking about the order Mantidia, also known as the Mantids. Yes, Mantid, the classic Mantid versus Mantis debate. Now, you could use either, I'm not gonna come hunt you down, but if you talk to most taxonomists, they're gonna tell you that Mantid refers to the entire order, while Mantis refers to a specific subgroup of species in that order that belong in the genus Mantis. So all Mantises are Mantids, but not all Mantids are Mantises. Why do we do this to ourselves? Anyway, Mantids are predatory insects closely related to roaches and termites. Yes, your favorite insect is cousins with roaches. Except mantids put all their stat points into killing. One of the most recognizable traits of mantids are those spiked front legs that they use for grasping prey. We call legs modified for grasping raptorial legs. Other insects have these legs too, such as ambush bugs and mantispids. Yes, this is not a mantis. How do I know? Because it does not have tegmina. Tegmina are thickened leathery forewings. Insects that have tegmina include mantids, roaches, and grasshoppers. The thickened forewings protect the more delicate membranous hindwings. Mantids are also hemimetabolous, meaning they have a three-stage metamorphosis from egg to nymph to adult. Like many hemimetabolous insects, the nymphs look sort of like the adults, they just lack wings. The eggs are quite peculiar, however, as they lay specialized egg sacs called uthica. The uthica are essentially egg masses that are coated in a hardened, protective case. Cockroaches do the same thing. And yes, female mantids do eat their mates sometimes. It doesn't occur in all species, but it does happen. But the nutrients from the male can help the egg development of the female. So really, she's just being a good mother. And yes, they can sometimes take down vertebrates like hummingbirds and lizards. No species is actively chasing this as their primary food source, but they're generalists. They're not really picky. So if they can catch it, they'll eat it. So how did they get the name Mantidia anyway? Well, you may have heard these insects referred to as praying mantises, as they often have their raptorial front legs joined together as if they're praying. Well, this imagery was used in the scientific name as well. Mantis literally means prophet in ancient Greek, and eidos means form. So, mantidia roughly means form of a prophet. Although we think of mantids as these master predators, they get eaten too. So they've become masters of disguise, camouflaging themselves as twigs, leaves, and flowers. Although, this does serve a dual purpose as it can help them to sneak up on their prey as well. Also, side note fun fact, have you ever noticed that mantids' eyes seem to follow you no matter what angle you're looking at them? This is because of an optical effect called pseudopupils. Insect eyes are made up of a bunch of individual units called omatidia. When we're looking at an insect's compound eye, the omatidia that are facing us head-on appear black, as we're viewing the light-absorbing dark-colored cells at the base of the omatidia which is why as we change our angle, the omatidia that appear dark to us seems to change, giving it the effect that the eyes are following us. Also, side side note fun fun fact. Have you ever noticed a mantis swaying back and forth as it's looking at you? It does this to gain a sense of depth perception of its surroundings. You'll often see it do this before pouncing on prey so it can correctly calculate its strike. It's hard to say anything bad about mantids. They never really come into direct conflict with humans. Unless you're like, afraid of them or something. I mean, they can give you a boo-boo on your finger, but that's about it. On the contrary, they're fantastic natural pest controls and a great way to keep other insects off your crops. However, since they're generalists, they're likely to be also eating the other predators on your crops as well as the pollinators. So, it's kind of a double-edged sword. 
There are some mantid species in the US that we aren't a huge fan of, but that's not really their fault to begin with. The Chinese mantid and the European mantis are invasive species from China and Europe respectively. And yes, I said mantis because the European mantis is mantis religiosa, which is in the genus mantis, so I can call it a mantis. These invasive mantid species will outcompete our native mantids as well as sometimes feed on them directly. Both of these invasive species were brought over a while back on nursery plants. Because mantids have such beautiful forms and interesting behaviors, they're commonly kept as pets. Just make sure if you get one, you do your research, also get it legally. A lot of these different mantid species have different environmental tolerances and some can be very fragile. And please don't go releasing it outside where it doesn't belong. Even if it's a species that naturally occurs in your area, if you got it shipped in from somewhere else and then release it in your area, it can mess with the genetics of the local population. So it's just best to avoid it. So if we can't just go around releasing a ton of them, how do we conserve them? Well, mantids need food. Their food is native insects. And many insects are herbivorous and need native plants. So you know what that means. Plant native flowers and trees and shrubs all over your property and you'll bring in all the food that these mantids could want and you'll start seeing them show up. And layer your native plantings. Have tall trees and low growing shrubs. The more complex your little landscape is, the more niches are open for other insect species, thus higher diversity and the mantids will have more choice of what to feed on. And before we close out, no, praying mantises are not endangered. They're not a protected species. The government isn't gonna come hunt you down and throw you in jail for killing one like your friends might have told you back in grade school. However, if you kill such a beautiful creature just for giggles, I think that reflects poorly on your character. Anyways, thank you so much for listening, y'all. It was a blast making this video. And please remember to like and subscribe to keep up to date with future orders. Peace.